But anyway, a lean and hungry gentleman just wandered through carrying a large bag. Finding nothing of value, he left disgruntled. Whoa! What is that? That's a random encounter. Can we follow the man? You can't see any man here. Oh, man. Follow the woman. I don't know the word woman. Whoa. Sexism. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we are jumping into the wonderful world of Zork. Now, this was one of the earliest interactive fiction games out there. It is a text-based game here, so I'm going to be doing a lot of kind of reading and typing as I go through. Uh, so you know what? This Because it's completely text-based, you're going to have to use your imaginations today, people. There aren't going to be too many glorious graphics to look at. Uh, this does mean, though, that you can sit back, relax, and let my soothing voice take you to a dream world of magic, if that's what you prefer. If not, you can be reading uh, reading along and watching as I type. It's uh, riveting stuff, I tell ya. Um, but let's go ahead and get started here, and this is an interesting, this is going to be an interesting challenge here, because I have some things I'd like to, to say about Zork, but I'm also going to have to be typing and reading, so maybe we'll have a, a few brief asides where I'll stop uh, reading what's on the screen so I can talk to you guys a little bit about this game. But here we are, okay, we are some person in some place, I have no idea actually the backstory here, but we are west of a house. You are standing in front of an open field west of a white house with a boarded front door. There a small mailbox here hmm well the fact that they're mentioning a mailbox makes me think we should go ahead and open it so let's just give that a whirl opening the small mailbox reveals a leaflet well let's go ahead and take the leaflet and see what this does for us taken okay look at leaflet uh, Zork <laughs> welcome to Zork Zork is a game of adventure danger and low cunning low cunning so you have to be stupid to play it, or you can be stupid to play it, I don't know. In it, you will explore some of the most amazing territory you've ever seen by mortals. No computer should be without one. Without a Zork. What is a Zork, by the way? Here's here's an interesting bit of trivia. I never knew growing up what the hell a Zork was. I knew the game Zork. I'd never played it before, obviously. But, well, not maybe not obviously, but I had never played it before. I had no idea what Zork was, but I, when I was reading up on this game, I found out that Zork is a hacker term from sort of the MIT 19, late 1970s era, but it basically meant an unfinished piece of software. So Zork is literally titled as an unfinished piece of software. It is finished, though, obviously, as you can see. So, uh, yeah, uh, they wanted to call it Dungeon, but they were worried about, you know, Dungeons and Dragons creators... Uh, TSR is suing them. Anyway, uh, kind of interesting. We got this little leaflet here, kind of breaking the fourth wall, introducing us to the game of Zork. So, okay, well, where do we go from here? Well, let's try and uh, go north. See what happens there. So I do have a little bit of a guide here to make sure we're, we're not wandering totally aimlessly, but I'm going to have a bit of fun with it and try some things and just kind of mess around. But if I get lost, I'll definitely be referring to the guide so we're heading in some sensible direction. But anyway, we've gone north of the house, and you are now facing the north side of a white house. There's no door here. All the windows are boarded up. To the north, uh, a narrow path winds through the trees. What is with this house? Can we figure out a way to enter the house out of curiosity? I can't see how to get in from here. Okay, let's just try a few things here. Let's just try going east. You're behind the White House. The path leads into the forest to the east. In one corner of the house, there is a small window, which is slightly ajar. Let's try this. This might be our death that we're going to here, guys. But we are going to try and get into this house. With great effort, you open the window far enough to allow entry. Well, let's go ahead and enter the house. Now, when you encounter a weird boarded up house in the middle of the forest and you have no idea how you got there, it may not be advisable to actually randomly enter the house. But we're going to we're going to we're going to do a little light B and E here and see what we find on the inside. Kitchen. You are in the kitchen of a white house. A table seems to have been used recently for the preparation of food. A passage leads to the west and a dark staircase can be seen leading upward. A dark chimney leads down um, and to the east is a small window which is open on the tables and elegant elongated brown not an elegant an elongated brown sack smelling of hot peppers bottle is sitting on the table the glass bottle contains colon a quantity of water okay let's go ahead and take the bottle let's take the sack uh what else can we do <laughs> we're, we're literally robbing this house there's there's no if ands or buts about it let's go upstairs 
One thing I like about Zork is that it has a pretty sophisticated text parser. So Zork is based on um, Colossal Cave Adventure, which was the very first text-based adventure game ever. And the creators of Zork, when they got a hold of that game, they thought, this is amazing, let's try and improve it. So they made Zork as sort of an, an advanced version of this idea of these, these interactive uh, fiction games. And they went a step beyond. So rather than just having a two-word parser like take bottle, take sack, we can actually type in more complex commands. I guess I haven't really taken advantage of that yet. But I have read that the text parser is fairly sophisticated, which I always like in adventure games. You know, one minor gripe I have with Sierra games, even though I love them, is that sometimes the early games, at least, their text parsers are very primitive and it can be a little annoying. So, so hopefully Zork doesn't really uh, have that uh, problem. Anyway, we've gone upstairs. We, we, we've, we've robbed the kitchen. We're now lurking through the house, looking for the inhabitants. You've moved into a dark place. It is pitch black. You are likely to be eaten by a Gru the hell is that? What is a Gru? Will it tell us? Ooh, it will! Look, look, advanced text parser, what did I tell you? The Gru is a sinister lurking presence in dark places of the earth. Its favorite diet is adventurers, but its insatiable appetite is tempered by its fear of light. No Gru has ever been seen in the light of day, and few have survived its fearsome jaws to tell the tale. You know what? The Gru kind of reminds me of Don't Starve. If you guys have played Don't Starve, which is sort of a more modern game, um, if you get uh, caught in darkness in that game, you will eventually be killed by something called Charlie. Uh, so maybe the Gru is like the descendant or the ancestor of Charlie. Anyway, uh, let's get the hell out of there. Let's see if it can parse this. I don't know the word hell. Okay, well, how about just get out of there? No, doesn't know. Okay, let's say go downstairs. Fine, the upstairs is inhabited by darkness. It's going to kill us. And, uh, okay, there we go. We're now in the kitchen. Um, let's look. The kitchen passage leads to the west. Uh, let's just see what's west here. I'm in the living room. Sweet, let's watch some TV. You're in the living room. There's a doorway to the east, a wooden doorway with a strange gothic lettering to the west, which appears to be nailed shut, and a trophy case, a large oriental rug in the center of the room. Above the trophy case hangs an elvish sword of great antiquity, a battery-powered brass lantern. Oh, man, sweet. Let's take the sword. Let's take the lantern. Yo, we're, we're straight up robbing this house, and I guess we can't go further west. It is nailed shut. How about you sword on a uh, door? Uh, attack door with sword. Uh, I've known strange people, but fighting a wooden door? <laughs> wow, it actually knows what I was trying to do. Okay, I guess when you fight inanimate objects in this game, everybody loses. So don't want you doing that. Let's just go ahead. Let, let's, let's bail here. I feel like we've gotten everything we could out of this house. Let's uh, go west. Whoops, no, wait. Go east. And we're going to go north. Uh, look, uh, you're facing the north side of the house. There's no door here. All windows are boarded up. Hey, there's a narrow path through the trees. Okay, we've robbed the house. Let's just bolt into the woods. I feel like that's as good a plan as any. The forest path. This is a path winding through a dimly lit forest. The path heads north, uh, slash south here. Okay, one particularly large tree with some low branches stands at the edge of the path. So there's nothing really to do here, except they've mentioned this large tree. So let's take a look at large tree and see what's going on. Or how about look at tree? There's nothing special about the tree. Okay. Well, let's try climbing the tree. Uh, up a tree. <laughs> Our position is colon, up a tree. You're about 10 feet off the ground, nestled among some large branches. The tree nearest the branch above you is above your reach. Wait. The nearest branch above you is above your reach. Okay, so we can't go any further, is what they're basically trying to say. Beside you on the branch is a small bird's nest. In the bird's nest is a large egg encrusted with precious jewels. Apparently scavenged by a childless songbird, the egg is covered with fine gold inlay and ornamented in uh, lapis. Oh my god, they're really, they're really throwing some words at me here. Lapis lazuli. What the hell is lapis lazuli and mother of pearl? Unlike most eggs, this one is hinged and closed with delicate looking clasps. The egg appears to be extremely fragile. How about let's smash the egg? Let's go full destructive here. What do you want to smash the egg with? <laughs> oh, we're going to do it. I think this is really going to screw us. But let's try it. The sentence isn't one I recognize. Oh, man. Smash the egg. Oh, smash the egg sword with the sword. How about that? 
The egg is now open, but the clumsiness of your attempt has seriously compromised its aesthetic appeal. There is gold clockwork canary nestled in the egg. It seems to have recently had a bad experience. The mountings for its jewel-like eyes are empty, and its silver beak is crumpled. Through a cracked crystal window below its left wing, you see the remains of an intricate machinery. It's not clear what result winding it would have been, as the mainspring seems sprung. Okay, uh, we basically have just screwed ourselves here. Let's see if we can still take the egg. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if this is going to help us or anything. Uh, I'm just kind of trying things. I know that we're actually supposed to take the egg into the house because I, I have my little guide here, but I, I'm just curious what we can and cannot do in this game. Uh, and crime down. I still want to type crime. That's weird. Climb down. Uh, go south. I think because of what we've just done, we might not actually be able to get further in the game. We might have to go back and reset a little bit. That's okay. We're exploring. We're exploring here. We're in the living room. Move the rug. There was an oriental rug. We're going to go ahead and move it with with a great effort. How much effort does it take to move a rug? They said with great effort, too, when I opened the window. I think my character is actually just very frail and weak. But anyway, the rug is moved to one side of the room, revealing the dusty cover of a closed trap door. Open door. Uh, oh, okay, open trap door. Thanks for asking for clarification. The door reluctantly opens to reveal a rickety staircase descending into darkness. But drop egg into trap door. How about that? There's no room. Okay. Drop egg on floor. There we go. And go into trap door. Boom. Oh, wait, go... Uh, go down? Okay, you've moved into a dark place. The trap door crashes shut, and you hear someone barring it. Whoa, that's creepy, man. Somebody was in the house with us that whole time. Hopefully they like the smashed up egg we left for them. It's pitch black. You were likely to be eaten by a Gru. Your sword is glowing with a faint blue glow. Oh, kind of like in The Hobbit. Uh, what do we have inventory here? Uh, we have a brass note. I do like how all the, the key commands seem to be pretty intuitive. Like, I'm just kind of typing what makes sense, and Zork's doing a pretty good job of interpreting things. A brass lantern, a sword, a brown sack, a glass bottle. The bottle's quantity is, or contains colon, a quantity of water, and a leaflet. Uh, how about we light the lantern? Do we have any, anything to light it with? Uh, turn lantern on. How about that? Uh, wait, am I... <laughs> I'm spelling it wrong. Latern. Light lantern there we go you're in a dark damp cellar with a narrow passageway leading north and a crawlway to the south on the west is the bottom of a steep metal ramp which is unclimbable okay so we can go north or south let's go ahead and start with north and see what we find the troll room this is a small room with passages to the east and south and a forbidding hole leading west Blood stains, oh god, and deep scratches, perhaps made by an axe, mar the walls. A nasty-looking troll brandishing a bloody axe blocks all passages out of the room. Your sword has begun to glow very brightly. Okay, let's go ahead and attack the troll with the sword. Let's see what happens. The troll is knocked out. Oh, that was highly effective. Look, a small passage, there's a bloody axe, an unconscious troll is sprawled on the floor. Let's say kill troll with sword, because we don't want any witnesses here. The unarmed troll cannot defend himself. He dies. Almost as soon as the troll breathes his last breath, a cloud of sinister black fog envelops him. And when the fog lifts, the carcass has disappeared. Your sword is no longer glowing. Well, that was straight up murder, is this what I'm going to say. So where can we go here again? You know, when you're playing this game, you almost have to be drawing out a map so you don't get lost, because it's like east, north, south, west, which direction are you going? So we just came north. Okay, we're standing in this room. We can go east. South will take me back from where I came from, um, or west. Let's try going east because it seems less uh, forbidding. I don't want to go in the forbidding hole if I don't have to. There's a narrow east passageway. There's a narrow stairway leading down at the north end of the room. I'm totally going to get lost here, guys. A chasm. A chasm runs... <laughs> or chasm. A chasm. Funny how you're supposed to read that word. A chasm. A chasm runs southwest and northeast, and the path follows it. You are not on the south side of the chasm. The crack opens. Okay, I, I'm totally lost here, so I'm going to go back a little bit. Uh, this is a high south passage with forks to the northeast. <sighs> go west. Go east. I, I don't even remember where I came from, honestly, at this point. I, I have become lost. Go north. Uh, no, I don't want to be at the chasm. Go south. Let's try going south again. 
circular stone passageway. Some of them have left to be blocked in by caves. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. I'm no north. Go north. Uh, how the hell do I get back to where I came from? I can't even just, like scroll up, can I? Nope. I'm pressing page up and it gives me an eye. Uh, high north passage with forks to the northeast. Go northeast. Uh, you are on the south edge of a deep canyon. Passages lead off to the east, northwest, and southwest. A stairway leads down. You can hear the sound of flowing water from below. Well, let's go down. Uh, we're now in a loud room. This is a large room with a ceiling which cannot be detected from the ground. There is a narrow passage from east to west and a stone stairway leading upward. The room is definitely loud with an undetermined rushing sound. The sound seems to reverberate from all the walls, making it difficult to even think. On the ground is a large platinum bar. Okay, take the bar. Bar, bar, bar. <laughs> Wait, did you did you actually take it? Uh, inventory, inventory. What, 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 what? Take platinum bar. Bar, bar, bar. Is it doing that because we're in the loud room? I'm kind of confused. Hold on. Uh, okay. Oh, I get it. The sound is so loud and the reverber, the, 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 the reverberations coming from the wall make it difficult to think. What an interesting little mechanic in this room, huh? It's sort of like breaking the fourth wall in a weird way because like it's it's preventing me from thinking. So I can't even look at my inventory. I hear the reverberations. Eh, that's that's kind of cool. OK, hold on. Now, how do we get out of this room, though? Large room, narrow passageway from the east and west. Uh, go east. We're now in a damp cave. Now, can I look at my inventory toward the earth? Yes, there we go. OK, did I take the bar? I did not. I did not. Interesting. Maybe I can't do anything in that room unless I stop the sound. Uh, so we got a little bit of a puzzle to try and solve here. I have no idea how to solve it, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but interesting. Interesting. Cave has exits to the west and east, a narrow crack toward the south. The earth is particularly damp here. Well, let's go south and see what we find. It's too narrow for most insects. Okay, let's continue to go east then. So we find there White Cliffs Beach. Yo, we went from like uh, just being in the middle of a cave to a beach. You're in a narrow strip of beach, which runs along the base of the White Cliffs. There's a narrow path heading south along the cliffs and a tight passage leading west into the cliffs themselves. Now let's go south. I'm just, my guy literally, okay, what has happened in this story so far? We robbed a house. We killed someone in a basement. He might have been a troll. I think he was just a very ugly man who happened to live in that house. Then we like scooted out of his cellar through some like narrow cliffs and passageways. And now we're running along a beach. Um, this this is not the tale of high adventure. This is the tale of burglary and, you know, armed homicide. So we're on a rocky narrow strip of beach. Beside the cliffs, a narrow path leads north along the shore. I'm half expecting, like, the cops to roll up and, and like, arrest me at any moment. Okay, a uh, narrow path leads north. So I guess that's the only way I can go. Hmm. Okay, so go north. Can we go north again? Can't go that way. Okay. There's a narrow path heading south and a tight passage into the cliffs themselves. So it's kind of a dead end. Kind of have to go back from where we came. By the way, I am way off script here. So normally when I play these adventure games, I download a little bit of a guide be, uh, so that as I'm going through this game, you know, like for most adventure games, if you don't know what you're doing, you can't really get very far. And it's a lot of like pausing and thinking, and contemplating doesn't make for a great let's play video. So I always have a bit of a guide to like guide me where to go. But I always do try to like just mess around myself kind of between the things I'm supposed to do in the guide so that, you know, I'm having fun with the game. I have messed around so much with Zork that I am so, so, so off the book. Um, I'm supposed to right now have a painting and then go back into the living room of the house from whence I came. I'm lost in the cavern underneath. So I don't know if we're ever going to actually find this painting. Uh, if we do, that would be that would be good. But anyway, lean and hungry gentleman just wandered through carrying a large bag, finding nothing of value. He left disgruntled. Whoa, what is that? That's a random encounter. Can we follow the man? You can't see any man here. Oh man, follow the woman. I don't know the word woman. Whoa, sexism. 
It's a thing, guys. All right. Well, uh, how do we get out of here? The cave goes to the west and the east. I think I just came from the west. Or I just came from the east. And I came west, so I don't want to go east again. Narrow crack towards the south. Let's go ahead and go west. Now we're in the loud room. Okay. Oh, crap. And we don't know how to get out of here. Go north. Uh, go south. Go west. Whew. Man, that room, that room is actually super, super annoying. It doesn't, I can't even look to see what's in that room anymore. A lean and hungry gentleman wandered through carrying a large bag. Who is this dude wandering around? He seems as sketchy as, as I probably seem. I probably, to him, I look like a lean and hungry gentleman wandering through carrying a large bag. Circular stone room leading in all directions. Several of them have been blocked by cave-ins. Just head west. Let's just keep going west. Okay, this dude is following us. It's okay. Narrow east-west passageway. Uh, leading down at the north. There's a bloody axe here. Take axe. Yo. Uh, equip axe. I wonder if you have to equip anything. Yeah, you don't. I don't think you have to. Attack man with axe. You can't see a man here. Oh man, that guy. Is that if that lean and hungry gentleman comes back looking for something? I'm gonna give him something. Bloody axe to the skull. Okay, this is a troll room. Um. Oh. Oh. This is where we came from, right? So wait, if we go south, oh, we're back in the cellar. We made our way out of that damp, crazy, I don't even know what you would call it. Who has like a giant cave in their basement? That's what I want to know. And a troll just hanging out. Okay, let's try and go south here. You're on the eastern edge of a chasm, the bottom which cannot be seen. Narrow passageway goes north and passage continues east. Okay, let's go ahead and try going east. This is an art gallery. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We went from a house into a cellar, and within that guy's cellar is a giant chasm, so wide that no one could possibly like cross it. And then if you go a little further east, you're in the middle of an art gallery. This, what, we're in like the nexus of the universe here. Like the rules of space time don't make sense in Zork. This is, this is kind of cool, like you never know what you're gonna encounter, but like seriously, an art gallery? Is it a troll art gallery? Who's Who's going to the to an art gallery that's in the basement cellar of some guy's random white house? I don't know. Very weird. Anyway, this is an art gallery. Most of the paintings have been stolen by vandals with exceptional taste. The vandals left through either the north or west exits. How do you know that for sure? And how do you know they were stolen? Maybe, maybe this isn't even an art gallery. It's just like an empty room. Like any empty room, you could say, oh, this was an art gallery where all the paintings were stolen, uh, a.k.a. it's an empty room. Anyway, fortunately, there's still one uh, chance for you to be a vandal. They want you to be a thief in this game, for on the far wall is a painting. Whoa. Hey, I was just talking about how I never thought I would get back on script with this, but uh, I, uh, oh, my load is too heavy. Oh, man. Seriously? Okay, how about this? We'll drop the axe. Now we'll take the painting. Yes. Okay. Ah, that's interesting, too, that you also have, like, limits on what you are able to uh, carry. Now, the game wants me to go back into the kitchen. So let's see if we can do this. Go upstairs. The trap door is closed. I have a feeling that when I just totally smash that egg, I may have trapped myself here. And so we're at a bit of an impasse here. I think in order to proceed, I might actually have to restart the entire game because I think I'm a little bit trapped. This kind of reminds me of those old choose your own adventure books do you guys remember those they were like books that you would read through and you'd read like a paragraph of something happening and then you'd have like three or four options and it'd be like if you want to do option a go to this page if you want to do option b go to this page and back in those in those days you would always kind of like keep your finger on the page where the decision was and you might go and check like two or three of the options before you figure out what you want to do Basically, that was like an early save state. And what I'm saying is that I did not save my game here before I decided to recklessly smash the egg. So I'm kind of tempted to actually restart and fast forward to, to skip some of the early stuff to get back to this part with you guys. I think I'm going to do that. So just for the record, we got the rank of amateur adventurer. And we're going to go ahead and restart here. One nice thing is how rapidly you can actually recover your progress. Just like a handful of commands and we can be right back where we left off. I wonder like what the record is for speed running this game. If somebody just typed in commands as fast as they could to beat this game. 
because you might be able to beat it in like five minutes if you knew the exact commands to type because you not you don't have to pause and read anything all right we've just recovered the painting and actually we might not have been trapped out of the house when i just restarted there it doesn't really matter guys because we've, we've totally caught up to where we were um, if you go north out of the art gallery, you actually come to a studio. So this appears to have been an artist's studio. The walls and floors are splattered with uh, paints of 69 different colors. I don't even know if I could visually discern 69 different colors. If I saw an art gallery with that many colors, it might just look like a bunch of blues and greens and, and yellows to me. I mean, I don't have necessarily the most refined color palette out there. But anyway, strangely enough, nothing of the values hang here. At the southern end of the room is an open door, also covered with paint. A dark, narrow chimney leads up from a fireplace, although you might be able to get up it. It seems unlikely you could get back down. Loosely attached to the wall is a small piece of paper. Well, let's see what's on this paper. Read paper. I'm curious. Congratulations! You are the privileged owner of Zork 1, colon, the Great Underground Empire, a self-contained and self-maintaining universe. If used and maintained in accordance with normal operating practices for small universes, Zork will provide many months of trouble-free operation. Wow, that's, it almost sounds like it's a living, breathing universe. Okay, let's go ahead and go up the chimney and get the hell out of here. You can't get in there with what you're carrying. What? What do I got? What do I got here? I've got, like, nothing. Drop owner's manual. Uh, drop manual. There we go. Go up chimney. Oh, okay. <laughs> the owner's manual is what was holding us back. That bulky, bulky phone book of an owner's manual. We're back in the kitchen. So we should turn off the lantern. First things first. We don't want to waste that lantern. Now let's go back and get the stuff that we left. Let's take our egg that we did not smash this time around. Let's take the sword and let's go ahead and go upstairs. Actually, before we do that, let's just follow the advice of the guide here. We're going to open the trophy case, and it wants us to put the painting in the trophy case. I don't know why exactly, but I'm not going to question it, because last time I did, I ended up getting in a fight with a troll and getting trapped in the basement for eternity. So, uh, put painting, trophy case. Oh, man, I'm trying to type simply for this parser, and I'm typing so simply that I'm typing like nonsense sentences. There we go. Now let's go ahead and go upstairs. Now we're in the darkness again. Oh, wait. What? Where am I? Go. Go up. You can't go that way. Wait, 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 wait. There's trophy case closed. Your collection of treasures contain, consists of a painting. Oh, this is where I'm supposed to. Is this my house, by the way? Huh. Uh, wait, weren't there stairs here? It must have been back in the kitchen. Let's look around of the passageway. Oh yeah, I, I thought the stairs were in the living room for somewhere for some reason. Go upstairs. Pitch black. You are likely to be eaten by Gru. I wonder what would happen. I wonder what the Gru death is like. Hmm. I'm gonna turn on the lantern just cause. Wait, can I save? Ooh yes, we can go ahead and save. Go ahead and save as Zork One Save. Go ahead. Um. Now let's see what happens if we don't turn on the lantern. Go west. Wait, look, uh, it's pitch black. You're likely beaten by a Gru. Go north. A forest. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I was like, hey, how did I end up in a forest? Because I only skimmed the bottom uh, sentence that I wrote up. But it says, oh, no, you've walked into the sla slavering fangs of a lurking Gru. The slavering fangs. Interesting. You have died. Now let's take a look here. Well, you probably deserve another chance. I can't quite fix you up completely, but you can't have everything. So now we're back in the forest. Trees in all directions to the east. There appears to be sunlight. Interesting. Wait, wait, wait. Drops you back in, in the forest? Now where are we? This is a winding path through a forest. Path has north, south. Large tree. Huh. Is the egg up there? Uh, take egg. Nope. Uh, climb down. Wait, what's in my inventory? What's in my inventory? Empty handed. I wonder if all the stuff I died with is up in the attic where I died. Interesting. Well, I could keep going on and on with this game, but I feel like, uh, you know, barring me sitting here and typing in, you know, a couple more pages worth of commands and just sort of constantly reading us through the whole game, it's going to be a lot more of the same. And so, you know, in the interest of the 1001 quest, which is my quest to play through a book of 1001 games, I feel like I've got a pretty good sense of Zork here. So very quickly, one thing that I personally have learned from Zork 
is that you don't want to necessarily just go murdering trolls all haphazardly. You want to go in with a plan. If you're going to burglarize a house, definitely follow the instruction guide you're given, or you can get trapped. Somebody can bar you into a cellar and leave you to sort of a horrible death or just maybe something worse than, worse than death, a fate worse than death, which is just you wandering around the caves endlessly, which is not good. I think we also learned here that Zork is a pretty a pretty cool adventure game, I would say. I almost, it's interesting because like Sierra games are my go-to example for adventure games. And those games are very unforgiving where like if you miss an item on the first screen, you may never be able to come back there and get it and so on. Zork seems very different where it's much more open and you're allowed to explore and stuff. And I, I even think I was mistaken in that I could have gotten back into the house had I gone north out of the art gallery um, and climbed up the chimney. I would have had to drop a bunch of stuff down there actually, as it turns out. But anyway, uh, the, the point is, is that I, I like what Zork was doing here. It's sort of this open-ended adventure game. I know it even has Dungeons and Dragons styled or inspired combat. And with the troll, you know, we took him out pretty easily. But basically, it is possible to totally, uh, you know, get in a fight with that troll. And I think the fighting mechanic mechanics are similar to Dungeons and Dragons. So, you know, uh, pros and cons of this game, it's, a, it's this open-ended adventure. There's lots of opportunity to explore. It really does feel like you're playing a bit of an interactive story. And this is the type of game that would be really fun to sit down and play through over an afternoon or even play with a friend. You know, with these interactive fiction games, it's not quite the same as like watching somebody play Mario or watching someone play Halo where like they're playing and you're not getting much out of it. Because the core gameplay here is reading and then coming up with ideas of what to do next. If you were playing with a couple friends or just one friend, say, there's not too much of a difference between if you're the one typing the keyboard it versus them because like they're going to suggest things and you'll type it and you're both experiencing the gameplay, which is reading. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of these types of games. I, I really like the idea behind Zork here. You know, cons. I mean, it's an older game, so it doesn't have any graphics and, you know, it has it'll have some limited scope compared to what people could make these days. But, you know, like all in all. Based on my first impression here, is this a game you should play before you die? I would say, yeah, I would say I'd lean towards the yes scale. Um, I wouldn't say like it's when you must play or it's, you know, a definitely, but I, I could see this. I could see this. I think they did a really good job with Zork. I understand why people love it. There's lots to explore, lots to try and figure out. And it seems kind of fun and it seems a little more forgiving than some of the other early adventure games. So yeah, I like this game. Um, Anyway, guys, if you have enjoyed watching me play some Zork here, go ahead and give the video a like and or subscribe to the channel because I will be back with another game in my ongoing quest to play through that book, 1001 Games You Must Play Before You Die. And uh, yeah, you'll want to be here for the next video, I, uh, I hope. And anyway, guys, uh, other than that, don't get killed by Gru's in the darkness and don't get trapped in cellars. And until next time, peace. So it turns out if you get further into this game, you have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a thief who's quite annoying to kill. As you can see here, attack after attack after attack leads to either me dropping my knife or missing him. Uh, so here's where the actual combat mechanics come into play. A little annoying, but also kind of interesting. Kind of, kind of interesting to sort of have more dialogue-based mecha uh, combat mechanics than, say, um, a more graphical modern game that you'd see. So yeah, yeah, Zork. Interesting, interesting game, man. Interesting game.